activity, um, you know, teacher guided, um, and then concluding with some sort of discussion and providing labels and definitions and explanations for what you did. So now I'll talk about my fifth grade lesson, which is um, literature based and it combines coordinate geometry, which is in the location standard, and perimeter, which is in the shapes and properties standard. So um, I use the book Holes, which maybe some of you have read. Um, it's a Newbery Medal winner, and um, fifth graders can definitely read this. Um, so I'll just give you a brief background of the story. Um, this boy, his name is Stanley, he is convicted of this crime that he didn't really commit, and he has to go to this place instead of prison, and it's called Camp Green Lake, and um, there's a bunch of other boys there, all with like weird nicknames, and they have to dig a hole every day, and the hole has to be five feet wide and five feet deep. Um, and there's a person in charge, this mean lady named the warden, and if they find anything they have to, interesting, in their holes, they have to give it to her. So, um, for my lesson, I would kind of make up this story that the warden wants to keep better track of all the holes and kind of make fence-in areas for each kid. Um, so, I would give them something like this, which you have um, in your packets on the last page. Um, and I would say, okay, this is Camp Green Lake, and um, I would give clues to have them give clues so they can figure out how to graph each region that each boy would have. Um, would, you know, she would put a fence around the region and they would dig in. Um, so I was hoping to do a couple of these. Um, so if I could have a volunteer to come up, um, and we're going to try to do it on the smart board, and I'm going to give you clues about coordinate, the coordinates, and we'll draw a picture. Anyone want to come up? Okay, Andrew. And while he's doing this, you can do it on your sheet too if you'd like. Okay. So, all right, well, this is kind of pretty straightforward. It's not really clues. But so, Stanley's section has four points, and the first one is one, one. The second one is one six. Five six. And five one. Okay. So now how can we figure out how much fencing we would need for this area? What would we first need to do? Oh, sorry, Christine. See how long the sides are. Okay, okay. So maybe we can connect the dots first okay. to make sure that's right to draw a fence. Okay, so now let's find the side, the length of each side. How are we going to do that? Count the boxes. Okay. For each side has four? Yeah, four boxes. Okay. That's a thought. Should we check that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so four by five. Four by five. Okay. So how can we use that information to find how much fencing we need to make an outline around that box? Knowing that there are four, four boxes on one side and five on the other. Jessica? 2 times the length plus 2 times the length. Okay. So if we do that, how much would it be? It'd be 2 times 4. What are we trying to figure out what we're trying to do? The perimeter. Oh. <laughs> so we'll add them together yeah. and we get 18. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh oh, I guess I forgot to say that. We would also say that each box is one foot, represents one foot. So, we can say that the total length around the size is 18, and if each box is one foot, then that's 18 feet. So, we need 18 feet of fence. So, um, 
Okay, so we'll just do, um, I drew on your sheet already. Um, one of the people's names is Zigzag, and that is Zigzag's um, section. So on your own, try to figure out how much fencing you would need for his section, and I'll draw it on the board too. Anyone have an idea yet? Jessica? I got 18. 18. Okay, and how did you get that? Let's leave all the sides. Um, we'll start with the bottom side is 2. Okay. As you count the two squares. Mm -hmm. And if you go left, that section is 3. Mm -hmm. Continuing left, there's 2. And the side is 2. The top is 4. And the right side is 5. And then I added <coughs> them all together and to get the perimeter. Okay. Awesome. Sorry. Okay, so that makes sense, right? And you use the word perimeter, which I have not yet thrown out there. But we will, you know, I'll, at the end of the lesson, I would label that that is perimeter because, you know, the total length around the side that we need is called the perimeter. Um, and also, what have we noticed about the perimeter of this and the perimeter of that? They're the um, and so on, on my lesson plan, I, I had um, a bunch of different shapes, um, all of all different shapes, you know, um, compound ones like these and just straightforward squares and rectangles, but they all had the perimeter of 18. And you could get into a discussion, um, you know, about how things can, shapes can have the same perimeter, but they don't necessarily have to look the same. And then, well, this, does this have the same area as that, even though it has the same perimeter? And you can get into the relationship between area and perimeter, which they kind of learned in sixth grade, not fifth grade. Okay. So, um, yeah, so during this lesson, how I would assess students is kind of just to look at their, um, their grids and see, are they accurate? Did they label the coordinates to help them? And how did they figure out the perimeter? Did they just count the boxes, or did they maybe figure out that you can subtract the y axis, the y coordinate from the other y coordinate to get the length and do it that way? So, um, so after all this, um, why do we learn about shapes? Um, at first, when I got this topic, I was like, hmm, I didn't think there would be a lot to do with shapes. You know, you kind of figure out this is a square and this is a circle, and that's kind of it. Um, but shapes can really be used as a context to study lots of other things. Um, algebra is part of it, you know, with the coordinate graphing, and you can figure out the Pythagorean theorem if you have the coordinate graphs, and you can do triangle on there. Um, also learning about things like perpendicular and parallel sides. Um, proportional reasoning is used when you talk about similar shapes, so like triangles have proportionate sides and angles. Um, you need to know how to measure things with perimeter like we just did, or volume and area. Um, and shapes are everywhere in our world. Um, you know, they're at the store when we're comparing cans of soup um, and their volumes, or um, in road signs like the octagon on the stop sign. Um, you know, if kids are having construction done on their house and they can look at the blueprints, they can see the relationships between, um, you know, cylinder kind of columns and different shapes, um, and also maps. Um, here we are, and in this map I can see so many different things, like I see parallel lines, I see trapezoids, can't really draw them though, um, and I see rectangles, you know, right here, and I see intersecting lines, um, and this is actually one of my lessons, is kind of finding shapes and maps. Um, so, for my summary, um, we learned about the four geometry content standards, shapes and properties, transformations, location, and visualization. We learned about the five levels of geometric thinking, or the three that we're 